Hi, welcome to Fundamentals Friday. Hopefully a regular segment, although don't hold me to it, where I explain just a little snippet of something to do with electronics, some little, you know, a little building block circuit or something like that. Today, we're gonna to do high voltage DC generation. Like, uh, this is a follow-up from the uh, UNI-T video I just did. If you haven't seen it, it'll be linked down below, where it generated five kilovolts uh, DC inside. And we had a quick look at the circuit and I said I'd explain it further. So that's what we're gonna do here. Now my aim with this uh, segment is to keep it relatively short. I know I always say that, this is just a quick video. I'll try and keep it to like 10, 15 minutes, something like that. Eh, we'll give it a go. If I'm doing half hour uh, tutorials, I think I'm doing it wrong. So anyway, let's take a look at high voltage DC generation. Now, let's have a look here. You've seen uh, your traditional uh, transformer here. Let's say it has the one to one uh, winding ratio. So we're feeding in one volt AC and we're getting out one volt. Now, you've seen your regular half wave rectifier like this with your diode there and your capacitor. Right, everyone's familiar with that circuit. Okay, it rectifies the AC, but some magic happens if you swap the diode and the capacitor there. There's our capacitor and there's our diode like that. It has to be in that direction like that. This becomes what's called a Villard voltage doubler. And this is how it works. Now, um, as the blue waveform here, okay, we've got ground here. This is, it's not ground, it's just a circuit reference. Uh, point so G and that's at zero volts. It's an AC signal we're getting out of the transformer So the voltage uh, at point A there is this AC square wave. No, it doesn't have to be a sine wave In fact in most cases it is actually a square wave. Okay, and B in the uh, green waveform here will be our output waveform and as you can see it you end up with a voltage doubled Signal so how does it do it? Well, it's actually very easy. Let me take you through step by step. Now, let's assume that our reference point here is zero volts and we're on the positive cycle here. So this point here is one volts. Now, we have to assume that the capacitor is already charged up and the circuits reached uh, steady state. Let's not go into capacitor charging and uh, all that sort of stuff. We've got no load, so the capacitor is gonna charge pretty darn quick. Now. Uh, what we've got here, zero volts, one volt at this point here, but the capacitor is already charged up. Just assume, follow me here, it's already charged up to one volt. Okay, so we have one volt across our capacitor there, like that, one volt, positive, negative. But we've also got one volt here as well. You add them up, one volt plus one volt relative to this point here gives us two volts on our output. That's all there is to it. And that's why the green B here, the green signal is at two volts when the input signal here is on its positive peak at one volt. So we've just doubled our voltage. Brilliant. But now what happens when our input signal, the blue waveform here goes negative? Well, the voltage on this capacitor is always gonna stay the same. Remember, there is no load here, okay? so the charge is not gonna drain off that capacitor, it's gonna stay charged up to one volt all the time. So now we have minus one volt on the input here because our blue waveform has now gone negative like this. And once again, we add up those two voltages. Minus one volt plus one volt is zero volts. So instead of two volts we had before, it now drops down to zero volts on the output. And that's exactly what the green waveform here shows. It now drops down when this blue waveform transitions down, the green output waveform also transitions down to zero volts. So it's converted, you'll see that in the same amplitude, the blue waveform has just been effectively shifted up like that, and that gives us our voltage doubled signal. That's all there is to it, it's real easy. Yes, it changes once you put a load on and the capacitor discharges and all that, but we're not gonna cover that today. That's our voltage doubler. But I know what you're thinking. This is not DC, it's AC, look at it. This green waveform, it's, yeah, it's, it's not going negative, but well, it's a pulse, you know, it's a pulsating DC signal, okay? Yes, it does not go negative, so technically it's not AC, but that's not really, you know, proper flat DC. We want two volts DC. So how do you do it? Very easy. 
and you just add in another diode like this and another capacitor going down like that and of course that work you can think of it as a rectifier same as what we uh, showed right at the beginning but it's actually like a peak detector so now the output waveform here I'll show it in black down here will now be like that and we get our steady two volts ignoring the diode voltage drop because these things usually work at quite high voltages and you can ignore the 0.6 volts or whatever in your diode in this case we're just going to assume an ideal diode so that's all there is to it we now get out two volts dc and this circuit configuration here is no longer a villard doubler it becomes a greenacre doubler now i actually didn't mention the operation of the diode here i sort of left that out of my previous explanation and of course yes it is needed doesn't work without it so let's have a look in the case when you've got one volt here and you've got your positive waveform then you've got one volt and the two voltages add up and the diode's reverse biased because it's zero here and two volts here so the diode doesn't conduct may as well not even be there but on the negative cycle of course it is required so when you go to minus one volt down here then this diode then allows this point to go to zero volts because then it's forward biased so that's why that uh, junction there can now drop down to zero volts if you didn't have the diode there it wouldn't work all right so now we have our voltage doubler but that's hardly high voltage dc generation where's our high voltage we want to multiply this voltage up to high voltages how do we do it well we can take our standard uh, greenacre doubler or more commonly known as the cockcroft uh, walton doubler or cockcroft walton multiplier as we'll see why it's called a multiplier in a minute and we can take this basic building block circuit and we can actually cascade this along to generate higher voltages and that's why it's often referred to as a Cockcroft Walton uh, cascade or sometimes a Greenacre cascade or even sometimes incorrectly a Villard cascade or something like that lots of interchangeable terms here let's not argue over it but what we're going to do is take this doubler circuit which we've got here and I've just redrawn it nothing tricky going on here at all there's the cap there's the diode I've just put it on an angle like that there's the other diode I've just put it going on another angle down like that and there's the cap being returned to there exactly the same circuit so let's take a look at it if we've got our one volt peak here I forgot to mention its peak voltage I was dealing with here before so I've got our one volt peak here we've got our ground reference point down here and as you saw before we got our filtered two volts DC at this point so this point here is two volts dc now what happens if we put an identical circuit in here like this a duplicate it and then actually have that diode coming back like that and then another diode going down here you'll see that i've completely duplicated that circuit i've added what's called another stage so that is a two-stage cockcroft walton multiplier and let's have a look what happens we've got our one volt peak signal here and we've got our but now instead of having our ground reference over here zero volts we now have shifted that reference point up to two volts so now we're working on that same we've still got that same ac waveform here we've still got that switching waveform there and we've got a ground reference point here so it's like we've just shifted this across we've got the exact same amplitude waveform here as what we had before but now we've shifted that reference point so what do we end up here we end up with a if i dot that along we end up with another shifted waveform there but it's shifted up by two volts relative to this point back here and that's important it's going to be relative to this ground point that'll come important later and then this point here will now be four volts dc filtered out that's a two-stage cockcroft walton multiplier all right so we have two stages there and we went from one volts to two volts and two volts to four volts so we doubled and then we doubled again what happens if we add another stage are we going to go from four volts to eight volts well let's see hmm let's add our cap in and 
let's add our diode back here of course and then we'll put in our diode over here boom and we're in like that now what do we get at this point remember the AC level is still exactly the same as before it was one volt here uh, peak or oh, sorry um, two volts peak to peak one volt peak it's also the same level here well it's gonna be exactly the same level again at this point except it's going to you you guessed it it's going to be shifted up by another two volts so this point doesn't become eight volts unfortunately it's not a double a double a double a double a double as you go on eh, no free lunch there I'm afraid folks but it does go up by two so it goes up by two four six and you guessed it if we keep adding stages eight ten twelve fourteen etc etc so that is why it's called a Cockcroft Walton multiplier and it's no longer a just a double a double a double a double a multiplier remember that one but you can still generate really high voltages because let's say out of the transformer here our transformer was giving out a thousand volts for example then what well, we get 2,000 4,000 6,000 8,000 10 kilovolts and so on you can get quite high voltages based on your transformer tap so I've gone in and I've added an extra stage here so we now have a four stage Cockcroft Walton multiplier and we're getting 8 volts DC out but 8 volts DC relative to where well it's not really it's not just across this cap here because that would be a differential voltage you could use that if you really wanted to um, you could use that as a reference point there but really then you're only getting the two volts out or your 200 volts or your two kilovolts or wh whatever your input voltage happens to be so the reference point you remember we said the reference point was always back at this point so that is where your reference point is so that now becomes your positive negative output voltage that is your final DC output voltage from this multiplier and you can see these points so basically the top of this network here these are all AC points like this and these ones down the bottom here are all DC points and that's why you can get your 8 volts or 8 kilovolts or 800 kilovolts out of this circuit so what do our components need to be rated at for this circuit well if you look at these waveforms here they're the exact same amplitude it's the same amplitude AC signal as our input 1 volt peak 2 volts peak to peak or whatever or RMS or whatever your input signal happens to be so these points along here are still the same voltage so the relative voltage across each capacitor and diode stage is still the same as your input voltage here so even though we're up to uh, let's say it's eight kilovolts let's say we're feeding in uh, one kilovolts out of the transformer we're getting eight kilovolts out you don't need eight kilovolt rated diodes and capacitors across here you only need ones that are rated to the input voltage or two times the input voltage depends on how you look at it so these components in here have don't have to be rated at the full output voltage and that's a neat part of this Cockcroft Walton multiplier and if you look inside one that's actually built in a commercial product that's why you'll find standard you know a thousand volt diodes or something inside something that can give out five or ten kilovolts because they don't need to be rated that high brilliant so let's take a look at the waveform view of this and what we're getting I've got point one two three and four here and that corresponds to the waveforms over here one two three four and as you saw here we're getting oh, oh by the way I've changed it to two volts peak to peak input not peak anymore just to avoid confusion so two volts peak to peak is going to give us two volts DC out here so on the vertical axis here is just volts two four six eight volts and that represents the voltage peak you can see that there two volts peak to peak and the next waveform is shifted up by that two volts because you remember our reference point down here is two volts so it's shifted up and the next one is then shifted two volts above that four six eight until the final waveform here this red one this one here is raised up at the reference level of six volts but you can see that the amplitude in there of each of these waveforms is still the same as your original two volts peak to peak input but it's multiplied up like that four stages multiplied four times and of course this is assuming ideal diodes of course 
If you have, especially when you're operating down at 8 volts, your diodes will have a huge effect. But as I mentioned before, this is assuming that there's no load on here at all. So these capacitors aren't really getting a chance to di discharge at all. But there is a practical limit where to how long you can make this thing. You can't just make it arbitrarily long because there is going to be some um, AC resistance, some impedance in here due to the components. And then, of course, it depends on the switching frequency as well. So when you're driving a load, uh, for example, or you know, even a tiny little load, the frequency is going to matter, the value of the cap capacitors is going to matter, and effectively, you can get the output voltages as, um, sagging because let's say we had the waveform at, at this point here it's gonna drop it's not gonna be a square wave like that it's gonna drop off like that so it's gonna drop off and then the reference and then the uh, peak value that's fed through to the next stage is going to be lower than in this case with the peak value with no load. So, and then this one is going to roll off like that, and then this one's going to roll off like that, and you won't have as high a multiplication at each stage. So, when you start loading this thing down, then you're effectively going to lower your output voltage due to the nature of the discharge of the caps and the AC impedance, and it gets all complicated, and the response curve can actually end up looking something like that if you uh, end up going too far. It can actually be you know, higher back at this point than it was on your output and all sorts of weird things can happen because you've got this huge uh, cascaded network. But we won't go into that, but that's what can happen when you load these things down. So these are primarily designed for essentially no load applications, electrostatic driving and you know stuff like that. So when you put a load on, it can get a bit complicated. Whack this into the simulator or even better, build it up for yourself and see for yourself. Now, it would be remiss of me if I didn't mention a variation on this and how you can overcome some of the limitations due to the uh, half-wave rectified nature of this standard cockroft walter multiplier that we've looked at. And you should be familiar with your full-wave and half-wave rectifiers in your linear power supplies, as we showed back at the very start. This was only a half-wave rectified, and this one is a half-wave rectified cockroft walton multiplier. But, just like your linear supply, you can do a full-wave rectified version. You just mirror that circuit down and duplicate it like that. You have your extra tap on the transformer, exactly like your linear supply. And, just like that, it doubles the frequency, so you get less sag on your capacitors and greater output, uh, you know, a capability to drive a load, just like a linear supply. So, what we're going to do today is we're not going to build up that full one, we're just going to build up the half-wave rectified one and have a very quick play with it. To the breadboard. Very, very quick build up of this just to show you some waveforms on the scope. My Dave Cad drawing here, we've got a four-stage uh, Cockcroft Walton multiplier. I'm only feeding in uh, two volts peak to peak and the good thing is at this low voltage we can see the effect of the diodes as well. So that, I've got that exact arrangement there built up here and I've got four channels probed at these points. Channel 1, Channel 2, Channel G, 3, Channel 4. Let's go to the oscilloscope. Alright, now as you can see we've got a 1 kilohertz uh, signal going in here. As I said, 2 volts peak to peak, as you can see there, if I actually, it's one, all, all four channels are one volt per division. If I move that up, you can actually see that it's there, but we'll move it right down there. So that's our zero volt reference. That first graticule line there is our zero volt reference. So all of our channels will be uh, ground reference around that point, all DC uh, coupled, of course. So as you can see, we're not quite getting our two volts out of there. In fact, we're getting 1.67 volts. We've got some diode losses there. You see how it actually pulls it negative like that. That's that uh, reverse bias diode in action, which we saw on the circuit there. So, well, that's this one here when it comes into play. That's that one there when it comes into play. So it pulls it a little bit low like that. Now let's switch on channel two and see what we get. Now the top voltage up there, which is effectively our DC uh, uh, output voltage, is uh, two volt. Is uh, sorry, uh, three volts. So you know we expected to get four volts out of this thing. So you can see how the diode uh, voltages are already accumulating those diode losses. So let's switch on channel three, and that's that third point there. And we're now getting four point four three. 
and we'll turn on the fourth channel and we're getting 5.83. So you can see that our diode losses have accumulated very quickly here. We expected two volts top voltage there and then four and then six and then eight, but we're only getting 5.83 volts out because each time you cascade through that stage, you're getting those diode losses accumulating until your top voltage there is, you know, 5.83 instead of the eight you expect. Ah, death, taxes and diode losses. Now if we actually drop our input voltage down here instead of two volts peak to peak, let's drop it down to one volts peak to peak and we'll be able to see that uh, our input and we'll be able to see the discharge on our caps. Watch this, it takes actually some time for those to drop down like that. And once again, if you look at the uh, losses in there, it's absolutely huge. You know, we're um, expecting uh, uh, 1 volt, 2 volts, 3 volts and 4 volts and we're only 2.19 volts. So that discharge there was due to our uh, scope input uh, resistance. So let's, um, this is at one kilohertz uh, by the way. So let's uh, jump that back up and you'll see it'll almost jump back up instantly. So we'll go back to two volts peak to peak and bang, it jumps straight back up. Now if we up that to 20 volts peak to peak input, then what do we get? Look, there it is, 19.7 volts, the top voltage of the first waveform, 38.7, we expected 40 there, so we're getting a couple of diode losses in there, and then 58 volts, and then 76.5, so, you know, um, even at, you know, those sort of uh, high voltages, the diode losses still add up, we're getting uh, three and a half volts less than our expected 80 volts. So that's our AC waveforms one, two, three, and four there. What about our DC voltages down here? Well, of course, we I'm still on uh, 20 volts peak to peak input, so I expect zero here. That's our reference point, and then 20, 40, 60, and then 80 volts. And what do we get? Well, we'll get a couple of diode losses. There's zero, and then down here. There's our 19 volts, because we're getting that extra diode loss in there, whereas you saw before it was 19.7 volts peak, because we've got that now, that extra diode loss in there. So that was 19.7, so we're getting our diode loss across here, and that one now becomes 19 volts, of course. And this one over here is 37.8, whereas we were getting 38.7 before, and then... Once again, one diode volt less, we were 58 before, now we're 56.7, and it all adds up and accumulates. And our final output voltage is 75.4 volts there. But as we said before, the voltage rating of these components doesn't need to be that full 80 volts. I've only got 63 volt uh, caps in here, and these are only 75 volt uh, rated diodes. But let's look at the voltage across that final cap there, and it'll be that differential voltage, it should be 20 volts, but because the loss is there, we're getting 19.1 volts difference there. Now let's have a look what happens when we whack a load on this thing. You can see the maximum top uh, output voltage there, 76.5 volts. I've got a 20 meg ohm load on this thing. Well, let's drop it down to even 10 meg. Look at that, it's dropped down to 75.6. Let's go down to, oh, you know, 1 meg. You would think that's a pretty low load on the thing, and it is. It's dropped down to 70 volts. Um, uh, peak output voltage, of course, that'll be like 69.5 or something DC output volts. And, you know, it's, it's just crazy. So you can, and that's a shorted output, by the way. There's a 100K. It's just, you know, absolutely incredible. So there's a zero ohm output. So that has completely shorted the thing. If we go down, there we go. That's completely shorted. That's at two volts per division. And what happens if we adjust our input offset voltage of our uh, AC waveform here? At the moment, for, for all the stuff I've just been doing, it's been at uh, zero volts offset. So it hasn't actually gone negative. So let's actually change that offset there. And we'll see our waveform says our negative point, And you'll notice that it doesn't change at all. You can see our offset changing over there. Well, waveform jumps around a bit, of course, but once it settles, not a problem. That's because our uh, Cockcroft-Walter multiplier is all AC coupled. So there you have it. Took a bit longer than uh, normal. That's uh, definitely over a 20 minute video, I think. Oops, try and keep it a bit shorter next time. And speaking of next time, uh, next Fundamental Friday, I think I'll do a similar thing, but for DC, like when you want to uh, multiply your voltage or double your voltage. So we'll look at uh, a DC a doubler next time. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like Fundamentals Friday, please give it a big thumbs up and as always, discuss it on the EEV blog forum.
Catch you next time.